Friends, welcome to our homestead. I am scrambling around right now because the weather has changed almost instantly and I need to kick it in high gear or I'm gonna lose a lot of things. Let's go. So about 36 hours ago, it was 85 degrees here in East Texas. And then we had some insane cold front come through and it was 33 last night. Tonight, it is supposed to be 29. So I have been scrambling like a maniac, trying to weatherproof all of my exposed pipes. So here on the chicken coop, I had an exposed water pipe on the outside. Sorry, the rooster is so loud right now. He's asserting his dominance with me in here. But we covered this outside pipe with this makeshift kind of covering. On the inside, I've got a bunch of insulation and hopefully that will keep things nice and cozy. It doesn't get crazy cold here, but 29, you'll freeze and crack pipes with that. A few years ago, I made these wood covering boxes for all of our stub out irrigation pipes that are all over the property from one of the previous owners. And we insulated the inside of them. I've got some insulation around the pipe itself. And that has worked pretty good over the years. Although I have had a few crack, especially when we had that nasty negative two degree weather uh, two, two winters ago. In here in the coop, I've got a heat lamp, but that is not for the chickens. That is for the water pipes. I have our water pipe now insulated. I had to do that yesterday, but this water pipe came in and it was just fully exposed. So I put some insulation around the pipe and I've got this angled board on top of it so the chickens don't scratch it off and poop on top of it. Then I've got the hose which feeds our automatic waterer that I built years ago. And I've got some pipe insulation around that. And hopefully all this will keep things nice and cozy and that pipe from bursting. But we had to quickly build all these things in. I was grabbing scrap wood from everywhere and just trying to come up with something as quickly as I could to keep this stuff warm. One thing I didn't have to do ahead of time was mess with any of the firewood. That's always prepped way ahead of time. We do supplement our house heat with our wood stove. So having this set ahead of time is really important. And for all the stuff I had to knock out yesterday, I'm so glad that this was already done. One huge job I had to do here in the garden actually was not related to turning off the water, which I had to do also but it had to do with some of the crops that we still have in the ground. And if you saw from previous videos, in this whole area, we had sweet potatoes planted, but there's a reason that I had to go through this entire area and cut back all of the vines on the sweet potatoes. If you do not cut back the vines on sweet potatoes and they are killed off by a freeze or a frost, then that rot that happens almost instantly once they die and into the next day will travel down into the tuber and you're gonna ruin your sweet potatoes. So if you know that you've got a frost or freeze coming, just cut off the tops, cut off all the vines of the sweet potatoes, even if you don't have time to dig them out of the ground because those potatoes will be perfectly fine under the soil for a pretty decent period of time, even though it's super cold outside, but you can't let those vines stay on them. We also had to harvest our pole beans. If you saw a few days ago on our Instagram post, we had gorgeous beans on here and the plant is still alive and I'm totally surprised by that. Although it didn't quite freeze last night, tonight these should die off and we had to get out here and harvest every single last one of them. I'm bummed because they are fantastic. These are the Blue Lake pole beans. Great variety, highly productive, I recommend them. And then of course I went around and closed all of our hydrants and opened up the ends on all of our irrigation lines. If the water in those lines does freeze, it should push out the ends and we shouldn't really have a problem with breakage in any of those lines. One of the biggest jobs was fixing this water line. That repair coupling had a leak in it and those things often do leak. And the entire area was saturated with water. Fortunately, it didn't, I didn't lose pressure in the line, but if this area had frozen, it would have seriously damaged all these pipes. So I had to go down and fix the repair coupling, and now I have to cover it back up 
because I don't want that pipe being exposed to this cold air tonight. Here we are in the greenhouse and it's almost 64 degrees in here when it's about 41 outside. The sun is going down quickly, but I really don't need to do much in here tonight. There are a few special things I'll do in the next couple of days with the moringa and the peppers, but I don't have to do them tonight. We've also got this brand new Mr. Heater MH540, and this throws a ton more heat than the one, the little one we had on here last year. That little Mr. Heater unit just was not enough for this bigger greenhouse. It worked great on that tiny greenhouse that we had before, but couldn't keep up in here. Check it out, we've got some nice broccoli on this second year plant. I let these go. I didn't plant anything new in this bed, and they're producing broccoli again. So if you didn't know, uh, brassicas are biennial, so they will produce again a next year if you leave them in the ground. Okay, one of the things I need to work on here are these peppers. They're starting to lean over just because they are tall and the stems are actually kind of weak. So they do need some support and I haven't done that yet, but I'm not gonna do it at this point because I'm going to be overwintering and pruning these. But I certainly do not need to do that right away. These will produce peppers for probably the next month or so before they kind of go dormant. And that is dependent also if I keep it super warm in here and how harsh of a winter we do have here. Uh, that heater will do a good job. If I see that they're starting to go dormant, I'm going to do, the, do that pruning, but I'm gonna let them go as long as I possibly can to produce as many peppers as I possibly can. So the other one I'm going to monitor closely is our beautiful Moringa trees. If you haven't seen our video on these miracle plants, click on the link at the top of the screen. The leaves on these are quite delicate, and while I can keep the temperature fairly high in here in the winter time, and it doesn't bother things like our citrus trees, it will hurt this because it is a tropical plant and not a subtropical. So what I'll do if I notice any damage on these leaves is prune these back. And I will prune them back to just the main trunk about 36 inches high. Those trunks I will wrap in burlap to keep them nice and toasty during the winter. And while I won't have this to eat for maybe just a month in the dead of winter, they do spring back from those trunks really fast when it warms up just a little bit. And what I love about having a greenhouse is, check it out, these indeterminates are flowering out again, these tomatoes right here. All of my tomatoes in the garden from just the cool weather over the last day and a half are all dead. But in here, I've got so many flowers on these tomatoes, I hope they get pollinated. I might take a toothbrush, an electric toothbrush, and start pollinating them. So that's it. You have to scramble sometimes on a homestead and scramble as fast as you can to knock out things that you had to get done that you didn't think you were gonna have to do for maybe a month or so. And while it's important to always be prepared, you can never be prepared for everything. And of course, on a homestead, you are going to have to scramble sometimes as fast as you can. You're gonna have to be outside when it's freezing cold in the dark, fixing or repairing something or doing something that you just let go and you had to do right at that moment. I had no idea this cold wave was coming. I should have been maybe paying attention better, but it was 85 degrees. I had no idea it was gonna drop 40, five degrees or so in the matter of less than 12 hours and then drop even further the next couple of days. Of course, after this cold snap, it's gonna rise up a little bit and we'll finally have our fall weather here in East Texas, but it was an abrupt change. And you just gotta be ready to roll with those kind of punches. And that's super important to roll with the punches like that because those punches will come often and you're gonna have to deal with them and like I said, you can't be prepared for everything. So be prepared to scramble. I always have backup repair items. I did a video about that in the past and I'll try to link it here at the top of the screen if I can find it for you. And that just goes over things like having on hand extra wire and switches and PVC parts for fixing broken pipes. And if you have copper pipes, you need something to uh, replace those with some extra copper pipe and a torch, you know, whatever it is. So I hope this cold front didn't sneak up on you like it did me and you were paying more attention than I was. Time to get back to work, fill in that hole back in for the water pipe. I hope you have a beautiful blessed day 
and you get all your work done. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.